other regional. Uh, I thought I'd put this blatant marketing again. Once more. This is something that we had done along with that, um, other, some of the other uh, uh, adapting to rising tides design competition for um, for BCDC. And so what we had put together was, you know, there are always talks about dams out at the Golden Gate. And we said, well, we probably this. You know, now that we realize that we only need to, to contain that three hour per year high tide, which is above 100 year, you know, could we control that by membrane instead of a wall? And so this was just, you know, from our uh, uh, marina folks, uh, you know, they looked at this and said, you know, I could probably put a carbon uh, membrane, carbon fiber membrane, and lift it out, and all you need to contain is two feet of water. Anyway, so the end result for Treasure Island, you know, was a, uh, a three-legged strategy. Um, elevate the developments such that over 70 years they would not be flooded, even if the perimeter were to fail, either by an earthquake or, or, or if it is uh, overtopped by a tsunami. We raise those three and a half feet above what needs to be done today for 100 years. For the perimeter, we built it to a uh, level where for the first 40 years, we would not have to put any sort of investment in there. Maybe just, you know, your uh, episodic repairs for, for uh, slides and stuff. No work on the bird. Leave a lot of room. We had the flexibility here. We left 300 feet, 250 to 300 feet to accommodate all those adaptation techniques that could be done. Uh, embankments, flattening slopes. And I think by far the biggest one was establish a funding mechanism, which was a tax, which was not, uh, so the initial uh, community facility districts, the bonds would, would continue on after the first 30 years and would be applied for single rights. And um, for the time that there is no utility of those dollars because you built it high enough, you're just generating and, and you're, you're building your rainy day fund. And as and when, uh, science, you know, the, the studies come out and you find out that maybe it's not rising as far, you know, you can adjust your tax structure right there. Those are some economic examples. Um, probably have about five minutes. Eight, eight minutes, <laughs> um, Working for ports and airports, I guess their, their biggest question was, we're building a new airport or a new port, this was the port of uh, Los Angeles. Um, you should we build it now for a sea level rise? And if so, you know, how much? And is it is it cost effective to build something now and deal with the problems that come with building it high now because your roadways are all low, or you ramp down, you don't need ADA access, you don't have drainage, um, you know, you gotta get around all of that. And so we looked at at building now versus building it over time in the future from two thousand to let's see this is 2080, and for the different curves that exist out there, you know, there are the NRC curves, which the Army Corps uses, the Ramsdorf ones, and we did these numbers with our, uh, with our uh, port economics group, um, you know, it was pretty simplistic, really, is, uh, you know, if you don't address sea level rise, let's say that is a certain cost um, to build it now, uh, if you were to add in NRC1 is the half meter sea level rise. Uh, if you were to add that in, you know, it would cost you, uh, you know, about 15% more than what it would be now. If you were to take an RC2, which is one meter, you build it in two steps now, which would be higher than what we need to be, kind of like the Treasure Island approach. And in 2040, you build it higher to accommodate the sea level rise that would happen. For NRC3, if that scenario plays out, which is a very conservative, Rate of sea level. We start seeing Antarctic melting, we start seeing the Arctic passages opening up and, and all those kind of things, then this would be an RC3, 22%. These numbers aren't really high when you look at you know, what the cost would be. When you did a net present value analysis, you know, these were the curves, and we said, you know, to meet these curves, you know, if you build it now, then build it in uh, the future, and then build it again. These were the two future construction scenarios. Um, there was actually a cost savings compared to building it now. Beaches, again, I'm sort of going fast on this one. Um, beach nourishment, well, that's probably one of the, the best shoreline protection, sea level rise adaptation strategy. Um, I think there are some numbers out there that for 
um, you know, even if there's a 20-foot beach in front of uh, a, an embankment, your waves go down by, you know, 50 percent. Other this, you know, back down look numbers. This was uh, uh, Rogers Beach in Southern California, and and they have been, you know, so the idea was for these homeowners, they could now get a permit from the Coastal Commission to put a seawall or a wetland in front of them. So we put a sand in front. We're doing it again right now for Malibu and running into you know, lots and lots of issues with the Coastal Commission, mainly because of access. Uh, but that worked, and it, and it does work. So the wave heights now are a lot lower than what you would see without a beach. Again, you know, an economic example to be there. This was, and we just chose Dutton, North Carolina, because it's a very, very uh, heavily monitored beach. It's on Army Corps. The Army Corps has the station there, and so they, they monitor it on a monthly basis over the past 40 years. So we know what the rates of erosion are. And if you look at, at what the rates of erosion for Duck are, which is 25 meters or so, um, based on, on recorded erosion rates itself, and the amount of sand that will need to be put in to maintain a shoreline where it is today. Um, if you were to stair step, just the same way that we did with the seawall examples, we were coming out with an average cost over 50 years for about sixty-four dollars per per meter of shoreline uh, every year. You know, again, these were numbers that, when you look at it, you know, they weren't very high. Uh, roughly three thousand dollars a meter of beach every year over fifty years. Um, the Dutch, you know, they place in excess of uh, sixty meters. You know, they have been placing since ninety-one six million cubic meters per year along their shorelines. And over the past uh, decade, they've, they've doubled that by pumping it near shore. So it's short pumping it. But it does help in terms of knocking down the waves itself. Um, you know, just a very quick one, you know, using the best data that we have, which is Zillow.com. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we looked at Duck, and we looked at a couple of other places, and said, well, let's put home values. You know, this was a $1.3 million home, which uh, had a lot width of about 120 feet. The options are uh, the county or you know, it's fair, fair market value has to be provided for any homes. Uh, that's our Fifth Amendment. We have to have that. So, one point three million dollars has to be compensated. Demolition, loss of taxes over thirty years. The total cost, if you will, for buying it out would be about one point five million dollars. And so, what have you done? Is you have, you have, you have the cost that has we have incurred is twelve thousand six hundred dollars. Per million for the beach, um, you know, to to um, to protect it or to protect the shoreline rather than the homes, versus nourishment costs. Using those numbers right there, we were coming up with nourishment costs of about you know, two thousand dollars per foot. You know, that's a six-time uh, cost benefit, if you will. Six. This is that North Carolina. And compared it to California, the mark. I mean, we're coming up with you know multipliers of fifty plus. And so summarizing it, really, uh, you know, it was, this is the three-legged stool, is, is time, so build it high initially and monitor it. Uh, leave enough room from the shoreline in terms of setbacks to accommodate any of those adaptation strategies that are being planned. And I think the biggest one is the funding. If a project can demonstrate that enough funding is being accumulated on that project, um, there's a lot of options. Plenty of options that uh, exist.